this is Eric Walmsley, Systems Engineer with Nutanix. Today's video is going to be about availability domains inside of Nutanix. More specifically, we're going to take a look at the fault domains inside of a block and rack awareness cluster, what they are, and how to enable them. When we are playing around today, you'll see that we're going to be using a three block cluster that has a total of 12 nodes. But first, let's just try and figure out what is an availability domain inside of Nutanix and how can we protect our data. If we hop over to the Nutanix Bible, which is NutanixBible.com, under the Availability Domain section, you can see that Acropolis is aware and can protect us against disk, node, block, and rack failures. Nutanix always protects against disk and node failures, but you have the option to protect against a block or even an entire rack. This way, if you have very high redundancy or availability requirements, you can configure that. Before we do any configuration though, let's actually take a look and see what's happening in the back end. If you scroll down a little bit, there's another diagram here that we've put together. It's showing something similar to actually the hardware layout that we have. Remember that Nutanix Acropolis is a fully distributed system. In the data path, when you have your applications writing data, Acropolis will take the data blocks and distribute them across the nodes in your cluster, depending on your RF configuration and your disk, node, block, rack awareness configuration. So this diagram is actually showing us both an RF2 and an RF3 example where a VM has written data. Those data blocks are unique, so you have a red, blue, and purple data blocks. The red and the blue are RF2, and the purple one is RF3. Now if you have this two red blocks with RF2, you'll notice that they're spread across two different nodes and two different blocks. So that way if one of the blocks nodes or disks fails, such as in this example here, your data is still recoverable because it can recover from that other red block. So it'll actually rebuild and you can see it put it on another node and another block. So we're still with RF2 able to withstand a failure. With RF3, if you only have three blocks, it can't continue to guarantee block awareness, but it does do its best. If you actually look at our documentation on block and rack fault tolerance, we have a table here that recommends if you want to do RF2, you must have a minimum of three blocks with one node per block. If you want to do block awareness with RF3, you need to have five blocks. Back over in Prism, remember we've got three blocks across 12 hosts. Go back to the hardware page real quick. Okay, we've got 3460s. And let's start by configuring block awareness. So go to the gear icon on the top right. Go to rack configuration. And then it gives us an option to change. So let's do block awareness first, hit next. And then you basically have to define what your physical layout is. So do add rack, give it a name. And then all you do is add the blocks that are part of that physical rack. So all you're doing is mapping your physical data center layout to this virtual layout here. Hit done. And then from this point forward, after you hit save, it will actually apply it to the cluster and the curator will start moving your data around so that you have your enforcement of block awareness. Let's take a look at configuring rack awareness. Uh, so you still have to go to the gear icon, then rack configuration, and then you want to select rack as the tolerance domain and then hit next. And remember we have everything physically configure it to be in one rack. So you would want to change this uh, to do rack awareness because we need to have all your nodes in multiple racks to be able to withstand a rack failure. So do remember that this has to be done physically first. So even if you come in here and put all three of your blocks in three separate software racks, if physically you have everything in the same rack, it's not going to help you. So let's do what we did before and go ahead and add a couple racks and we'll add a block to each of these racks. Make sure to give them a name that's kind of descriptive and you know what's what. Remember this should align with your physical rack and block layout with how they are installed in your data center area. Okay, so I'm adding my last one here. You can see I've got three racks. They're all separate. Each one has three blocks. So that way my data can be separated across all my nodes and blocks evenly. So I'll hit save and then Curator is going to start moving our data. And then once you log back in the home screen, you can see when your stuff is fully protected. 
once Curator has done its job of moving everything around, like you see in the third column, second row, the data resiliency status will say OK. And if not, it'll say rebuild in process. Or if it's not able to protect your data, it'll also throw some warnings or errors there to keep you informed. And that's how you configure block, rack, or just regular node awareness. Please remember, when you are configuring your rack configuration, that it does match your physical layout. Just please remember that. Physical layout should match that virtual screen. So thank you very much for watching. Please check out my other videos on my channel. Uh, you can also go to my website, ewoms.net, or follow me on Twitter, at ewoms, for updates. Hope you have a good one, and I hope this helps. Thank you.